Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, welcome to the week with me, Comrade Fatso. And we are here live in Brexit land, outside the British Parliament. And we're joined by prominent Zimbabwean academic and renowned government basher, Comrade Alex Magaisa. Comrade Alex, firstly, I want to ask you, what makes you think you are allowed to be out here in this imperialist country, constantly criticizing our government and being probably paid pounds? by the Queen. What gives you this so-called alleged right? I, I wish I had the money. I would be so grateful. Um, but you know, you can be outside Zimbabwe, but Zimbabwe can never leave you. Uh, and the reason why we are all engaged is because Zimbabwe is home and Zimbabwe is in our hearts and minds. And um, we are also uh, part of the community. We pay our taxes, we send money home, we buy stuff at home, we invest at home and it's important for us to be engaged and to continue to be included. I'm sure by saying Zimbabwe is always in you, you mean that the Green Bomber passport is always with you. But let's move on to what's happening back in Zimbabwe. Now as Zimbabweans we've been wild, I don't know if you know about this, we've been wildly celebrating about our new RTGS dollars. Uh, we're happy that we've got our own currency now, it might not be one is to one, it's maybe one is to three or one is to 4.5. So why do we hear uh, comrades like you bashing the RTGS dollar? What's wrong with our currency? Well, you know, um, it, it's, it's not us who are bashing the RTGS dollar. It's the government itself which is bashing its own RTGS dollar. I don't know if you heard the president. He was talking about Mr. Trump of America having given him some 2.5 billion US dollars and he was dismissing our RTGA as you can see, not my RTGA but my US dollar channel. So it's not us who are bashing the RTGA. It's the big man himself. <laughs> now, Comrade Magaisa, if you were stuck on a desert island in this sprawling Lake Kariba with Emerson Dambuzu Mnangagwa, just the two of you, no presidential guard or anything, what would you say to him? Well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to imagine the prospect of being stuck with the president Munangagwa on, a, on an island. Um, that would be something. I would probably play him, um, there's a song, Leonard Dembo song, Dambuzo and Ineza, or something like that. I'll probably play that. But um, anyway, more seriously, um, I think that um, it, it would be to, to say to the president that, look, you've been here for a long time, you've been in government for uh, 39 years now. Um, Zimbabwe is in, in a serious crisis and uh, yes, you managed to get rid of uh, the old boss, Mam Gabe, but um, you know, this is um, a time to hand over the baton to a new generation of leaders who have new ideas. Um, and you know what, it doesn't really matter, there could be people in Zanapia themselves, but you need something fresh, you need something new. I don't know what he is going to do that is different from what is not they have not been able to do for the past 39 years and i would ask him to have more empathy uh, for the people who have suffered i would ask him to reflect very strongly on the legacy that he wants to live and hope that um, he is not going to overstay his welcome um, like his old boss bob had many problems but one thing he wasn't was boring e no, no, no. no, no, no. He's, 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 he's not very inspiring. <laughs> yeah. At least at least he's got some comedians as ministers, but <laughs> Oh yeah, energy. The Zimbabwean struggle never seems to end. What do you think is the long term solution for the Zimbabwe crisis? Well, you know, um, I have to say twenty years ago when um, this whole struggle was beginning in the current phase I I have to say I don't think that anybody, if you ask us at that time, you would ever have imagined that things would be where we are. But we are still asking the same question 20 years afterwards. What are the long-term solutions? I think that Zimbabwe needs to understand the roots of the crisis. And the roots of the crisis than what we have seen in the last 20 years. And in my opinion, it's important for Zimbabweans across the political divide to begin to search for those solutions, uh, for those um, uh, roots and understand what those roots are because unfortunately 
we now see that even on the other side of the political divide, some of the behaviors that uh, we have seen in ZANU PF are beginning to come up. And this is after 20 years of opposition. So I think that in order for us to move on, one of the things that we need to understand is that we have destroyed our institutions. Institutional decay is at the root of the Zimbabwean crisis so that even if you change the actors, then you are still going to have the same problem unless you attend to the institutional decay. We need to fix our institutions. And by institutions, I'm talking about the judiciary, I'm talking about Mapurisa, I'm talking about the army, I'm talking about, you know, parliament, all these institutions which are necessary for purposes of ensuring that government is kept in check. We have to fix that. But do you think maybe this dialogue that's been called for by uh, ED could be the solution? Because he's got that gancho and politicians involved in Dara. He's got Brian Mteki and his jazz band. Eh? He's got Nkosana Moyo and his mammoth political party. Do you think that this dialogue could find the solution? With you, he's got a lot of giants uh, around him. Um, you know, I, I think that dialogue is great in principle. Dialogue is important. It's important for people to talk. We see it in many other parts of the world here where we are standing right now. We see Mrs. May and um, um, uh, Corbyn, they are, they are talking in order to find a solution to their uh, Brexit conundrum. It's because they realize that at some point the needs of the country are more important than their own political party needs. However, it has to be genuine dialogue between the actors who have legitimacy, who have the support of the people, who are representatives of the people. What I'm seeing at the moment, I think it's a bit of a circus to be honest. You have got people who could not even poll 50,000 votes in a national election. Some people could not even vote more than 10,000 votes. And these are people who are masquerading as representatives of the people. I think that it's more of uh, ED talking to himself uh, rather than talking to anyone in particular. And I think it's important uh, that everybody recognizes that there are two critical actors in Zimbabwe, and it's ED and Nelson Chamisa, it's ZANU PF and the MDC Alliance. Those are the parties that need to sit down and have a conversation. If you can have a conversation between those parties, be able to look beyond their partisan political agendas, focus on the country, I think that we could have a way out in this in our country. Comrade, I agree with most of your points, but I really believe that Brian Mteki represents many people. He represents an entire jazz band. So please don't count him out of the process, please. Eh? <laughs> well, that's why you're fun. And now I think the question that everyone wants to ask. Did DJ Fantan and Chillspot Records create Zim Dancehall? <laughs> you know what? Um, Zim Dancehall, I'm, 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 I'm old school. You know, I love, I love, I love Zim Danzo. You know, Tambo Mangoma, like everybody else. You know, here in Zoom, my levels and so forth. You know, <laughs> but um, you know, Wafana, you saying oh Chibaba, I may not do. I may not bang with But um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, um, if I were to make a decision, I would uh, do a Kwan Solomon and say we tore half, we tore half. And uh, at the end of the day, maybe Banu mm -hmm. So someone has to has to give it up to someone. But I only do what I am I mean, you know, when you dig, imagine. Eh? I mean, So I think you've you've heard it from the, the horse's mouth. He says we need to divide Zim Dancehall into two factions. That's what he said. <laughs> eh? Levels. Eh? Imagine. Imagine. Imagine politics. Eh? <laughs> he, he said this live outside the British Parliament. They are making it into law now. <laughs> Nana Teresa May and Jerem, Jer Jeremiah Corbyn. Zim Dancehall law. Imagine. Comrade Magaisa, you are always criticizing, criticizing ZANU PF. But take a look at MDC Alliance. They've had violence in their internal elections. Do you not think they're becoming like a ZANU PF light? You know, um, it, it's always difficult. Uh, but you guys, you don't like to listen to intellectuals and academics. In NGMGT, these people, they live in ivory towers. But these things have been written about before by many people. Uh, I think uh, one said uh, the problem with uh, fighting oppression is that there is always a risk that uh, the one who is fighting oppression might end up imitating the oppressor. And um, sometimes you do get this. Uh, we, we saw it during the liberation struggle. My comrades, they were killing people. 
uh, and doing all sorts of bad things um, as well as the good things that they were doing. And uh, we also see it even now, you know, with uh, many revolutionary movements, there are certain elements which uh, don't follow the right course. I think what is important is for the MDC to understand that it's got values that it represents, values that it must uphold, and uh, it must deal with those elements who are fomenting and causing violence so that they do not continue to uh, imitate and uh, appear to be like uh, ZANU-PF. They have to show a different picture. Congress, which is coming up, is going to demonstrate that MDC has come of age and uh, that they are able to deal decisively with violence because political violence is a no-no. Very important question for you, comrade. Who is your favorite Zimbabwean minister? <laughs> well, if I, if I mention my favorite minister, uh, my suspicion is that he might be fired. Um, but to be fair, my favorite minister has not yet been appointed. He doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. The mystery continues. Well, there's someone that you criticize often for overflying, Comrade E.D. <laughs> Why do you criticize him for flying? Comrade is doing out there doing mega deals and business that we're still not sure of, but he's doing things, signing some deals that apparently they'll come to fruition in 2039 or something. But why are you so against our comrade jumping on a nice, luxurious Swiss jet and just flying? Well, you know, um, I, we used to see Mr. Mugabe and we used to call him Vasco, Vasco da Gama. Uh, because he used to love flying. At any moment, you would be in Switzerland, you would be in uh, China, you would be in Singapore, wherever he wanted, you could just go. So we thought that Mr. Munangago would be different. He would stay at home more and perhaps, you know, send people away. But, you know, Mr. Munangago reminds me of uh, that boy who grew up near a growth point. And um, he used to see the businessmen's kids, you know, taking Coca-Cola, taking Fanta, my choice of sorted biscuits or anything, you know, eating them at will when I'm a sweet And you are not being able to enjoy this. And he, he always told himself, one day when I grow up, I'm going to own a shop. So, you know, you grow up and then he, he now is now owns his own little tuck shop. And uh, he's busy, you know, eating everything. At the end of the day, there will be nothing in that shop because he, he thinks that being a business person is someone you must be able to, you know, drink all the Coca-Cola, drink all the Fanta, eat all the sweeties, eat all my chairs. So, so he'll be bankrupt. And so that is the problem. He's overdoing it, flying everywhere. And, you know, sometimes we hear, oh, he's been given a gift. But no, Mr. President, there is no free lunch. That is well known. These guys who are giving you free things, they are doing so because they've got an agenda. Mm -hmm. mm. So basically, eat the uh, Anofarama biscuits too much is what he's saying <laughs> for all of you who don't understand Jima political analysis. <laughs> okay, a hypothetical question. You're driving Kumusha to your rural home in Chikomba and you go past three hitchhikers Chiwenga, Nelson Chamisa, and Mukadota. One of them you can pick up. One of them you can take out to lunch for a nice gorge gorge. And one of them you have to leave stranded by the roadside hoping that a shika shika will maybe come by. Who are your choices? Well, I would, I would, I would pick up Mkadota. Uh, gorge gorge? I would pick up Mkadota as well. And then the other two I would probably leave them together. I would too good to tower and I was. I'm sure they will have a very good conversation. And when they come out, Zimbabwe will be better. That's a very academic answer, hey? Comrade Magaisa, I'd like to thank you for being on the program. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. You're welcome. Very welcome. Uh, pleasure to have you here, Fatso. And um, yeah, it's great. And uh, thanks for the conversation. I hope uh, the audience will enjoy what we have uh, said here today. Learn a few things, hopefully. And um, yeah, great. Thank you, comrades, and food sake.